and I still remember how the sister Babani, uh, many years ago, actually, she actually approached me. And she said uh, she would like to support yeah, uh, the lands in Malaysia. Somehow, of course, she uh, made a lot of effort to do that. And she actually made that very uh, strong determination. And she said to me, in this life, I want to see the Kunun order established in Malaysia. So that is what brought uh, Barbarian to work on this. So I'm very happy for her work and uh, the committee. And I know it's not easy to do that. Yeah? Uh, but she has made the effort, and that sparks things to move on. And this is what uh, is important, but uh, anything starts with a talk, a good talk. Yeah? So in my case, uh, my experience in going forth, um, the joy and challenges, I'll share with you my lay life and how I ended up to take this uh, path. And uh, as you know, I'm seated here, <coughs> yet to be a big one. Yeah, and uh, <coughs> um, I started to have this idea and uh, I saw a monk. Yeah? At the time, because when I was young, I'm very Polish. Now I look a little bit more feminine. <laughs> <laughs> If you see my, my uh, youth photo, you will never rec uh, recognize me as a, as a female. Yeah. And I know the bike. Yeah. And uh, that time my friend, actually, she was in college. And she wants to see a teacher in a retreat center. And at the time, I don't know what it is because I was born into a Chinese Chinese family. Uh, I was considered quite religious in a way from very young. We always go to the temple, Toys temple. Then my mom used to do a lot of offerings. Then we would make cakes and everything, go and do offerings. So that was my exposure. And uh, so when she said she wants to go and visit uh, the, the teacher in uh, the tree, so she asked me whether I can give her a ride. So I offered. And I went. So the first thing is when I said, I see a mom. I've never seen a real mom. Okay? The one that I see is always in the TV where we have all the Shaolin monks, Kung Fu fighting. Yeah? And that was the impression of monks that I have. So the first time I see the monk at the, what do you call the stream, at the sun, it's so silly, very nice feeling to see someone silly. I don't know exactly what it is. And I see people, you know, closing their eyes sitting down there. And I don't even know the word meditation. So I ask my friend, what are they doing? Then she told me, oh, they are meditating. Yeah. So that word struck me. One is a monk. Two is meditation. So I wanted to find out. That time I was in form six. Uh, we have a holiday before going for a university. So immediately when I uh, went to the university, the first thing, even during the orientation time, the juniors were very scared of the seniors. But I was brave enough to go around and ask, do you have Buddhist society? Yeah, because I want to find out what, what it is about Buddhism. And then one of the senior candy told me that every Friday they have a common class where they will have a, a what they call Dhamma talk. Uh, we, we have, uh, from there actually I started to learn about Buddhism. Yeah. Earlier it's just only a mix about Taoism, a bit of Buddhism. And uh, so from there I start to, without fear, every Friday I will attend the Dhamma talk. And ever since then, also, I began to become very active uh, in the political committee. Uh, mind you, I can dance. <laughs> yeah, I did perform, you know, Buddhist culture dance. Uh, I joined them in many things, uh, raising funds, sutta studies, you know. And, but I love especially meditation. I like to meditate. So I don't know why, but I think probably my good karma is strengthening during that time. So uh, I learned uh, from UC, from the Blue Society. So then, of course, during the period of uh, learning, uh, there are some incidents or retreat that give me a lot of insight. For example, about Metta. 
about the elder, the, the kind of uh, experience that you feel that why people need love? Huh? Because we are all in love. And without love, we cannot move on. The love I'm talking about is not any kind of love. Yeah? It's an unconditional love for people to grow. For us to give ourselves a chance to do something that is good. <laughs> so, there are many different kinds of experiences. For example, at one time, I was also in the retreat for eating, for reflecting on the food. Suddenly I see that the trees of how the food come about, even to the field, to the animals, to the sun, to everything that comes together to help us to, to sustain this life. Uh, and, and all these things actually after to me. Uh, it just come. And uh, having all this experience, it starts to open up my eyes, my heart, to see more dharma that is coming in. And when I graduate, I still remember, I graduated with a degree in psychology. But I know I haven't graduated with Buddhism. I may graduate, yeah, but not Buddhism. And after that, then I start to work. When I start to work, I still remember that uh, without associating with the right kalanamita, uh, you tend to uh, go back to your way, way of habitual life, and you tend to also get angry faster. So I start to pull myself back, and uh, what they call, uh, join back my friends, my those kalanamita in the university. And uh, so from there, I get to associate a bit with uh, friends uh, in Buddhism and start to also join uh, BGF because BGF is for the, uh, what they call, more the elite group and uh, at the time uh, there are a lot of good Dharma talks and there are also a lot of good teachers coming there and the activities there uh, normally help us to develop our skill so uh, again I'm actually a life member in BGF and that's where I actually grow from and from there, even when I was working, I still uh, spend a lot of time uh, whenever I have, and especially in retail. Um, we don't have much time actually. We work from very early in the morning, but it's all time, 10 to 7. But it's also a blessing, where sometimes I can have my time uh, to also come out and uh, to uh, attend some of the uh, what we call talks in between. If I am on night duty, I still can go out 7 o'clock, go and attend a talk, and then come back about 9 o'clock, and then attend to my duty again. So that's how my life was when I was working. And what inspired me most is uh, when I was uh, learning and uh, practicing, uh, there are more things that come to me to see that. Uh, how life is, and uh, I think at the age of 26, I remember uh, one of my friends who suffered from cancer. That, and I think that actually gave me a lot of impact to reflect what life is all about. Because at the time, I was still young, still very energetic, and uh, it's gone. Uh, and uh, mm. that reflection actually gave a very deep thing to me to also find out what life is all about. Yeah. After that, uh, again I still join activities to keep myself occupied, to keep learning. And at the age of 29, um, being like anybody's uh, parents, they will ask you, aren't you going to get a boyfriend? And my mother was looking for a son-in-law, a graduate son-in-law. Because I'm the only, uh, what they call, a uh, child in the family who went to university. So, when she asked me this question, yeah, you have been hearing from other regions how they come from, the parents and other things. Uh, for me, my mom, when she asked me this question, uh, they were living in Johor. So I was visiting them at the time, my mom asked me this question. But very spontaneously, I just answered her, I said, no, I think maybe one day I'll become a mom. Yeah, I just answered very spontaneously. I don't know why, but at the time I just answered like that. Then my mom kept quiet. 
That's it, so I'm talking, finish the story. So I went back to KL. One week later, my brother and my other sister called. What did you tell mom until she is so depressed, cannot eat, you cannot sleep? <laughs> yeah? So I said, oh, that day she asked me this question. So I said, I answered her just like that. Maybe that made her uh, depressed a bit. So in my mind, since I'm the one that caused her the suffering, I will settle her problem with it. So then I think of a way, how should I convince her back not to have worry? And I called back, and just told her, I thought, maybe if I have to tell a white lie or whatever, just to make her at ease first. But maybe it's not a white lie, but it's just to make her mind at peace. So I called back, I said, Mom, I think what you say is right. Maybe I should get somebody with it. Do you know she laughed? I have never heard that kind of laughter. So in my heart, I said, okay. Solve the problem. Okay. <laughs> it's not my problem, it's her problem. Okay? So ever since then, she has never given up to ask my family members and others to convince me not to have that idea. Yeah? She even uh, tried to ask my godmother to tell me, and my godmother will come and tell me, you know, your mom tell me like this and this and this, I tell you, but don't worry, I support you. <laughs> yeah? But just to keep her at peace. Yeah? And then as time passed, I remember uh, since then, then my determination became even stronger. Yeah? But within that time, I still keep myself uh, learning. I uh, normally every year I go for a retreat. I always tell people that, that is to recharge my battery, big battery. You know, sometimes after some time, the bad habit comes, and you go for uh, retreats, and you purify your mind again, and you get all the energy to come out again, and then face the world. So, from first year, second year, third year, fourth year, I still remember, uh, as usual, uh, because in the train line, we also go overseas to do some purchasing. And uh, as usual, uh, when I went to China, I would buy some goods from my mom. So in that particular incident, when I gave her the towels and had the, what you call, uh, <coughs> blankets, then she told me one thing, I said, why are you buy so much? Next time you're going to go forth, I felt so happy. Just one statement like that. I know now she is able to at least to get the idea. Yeah? And then in seasons, I think a lot of parents feel very difficult to face that kind of situation, especially your relatives, your other friends, when they ask, hey, you know, my daughter, you know, so old really not to that thing on me. You know, in the old days, people say, you know, there will be a kind of like, uh, a daughter that you kept for, you know, uh, nothing, isn't it? So people want the daughter to get married. In Chinese, I don't remember uh, if those who know Chinese, eh? uh, you are Miss Daughter. Either two things only. Either Chu Jia or Chu Jia. Oh. Huh? Either get them married or get them renounced. Yeah, only two things. So, uh, but my mom slowly starts to accept, even my neighbors or relatives when they ask, then she was saying, oh, uh, she said she wants to go forth. So, up to her. So she's able to answer. So I know she's able to accept. And slowly, slowly also, I also impart some dhamma and discuss with her sometimes. And uh, after nine years, uh, before that, within that time, I used to actually take out my hair and look, see how I would look like when I, you know, shape. Because my mom used to tell me when I was young, I used to sit one side. So I always imagine if I shift my head maybe in you know, one side. It would be so perfect. So I used to take my hair and look at the mirror. Yeah? And then to, uh, until the day um, uh, I wish to go to the, uh, what they call to the holy side. And that is when uh, there's uh, my presentation, but in my uh, he brings people to a pilgrimage to India. So I have that very wish that I want to go to uh, the holy sites of the Buddha. And uh, strange enough, every time when I read uh, the sutta, especially when it comes to uh, vulture speak, I don't see the association. I don't know why. I just want to know, where is this vulture speak from earth, you know? And uh, so when they actually, it's also difficult for me to go because there are 50 over seats only 
and it's still up one year ago. So the land register is under the KIV. And in the KIV, I was so I was number 88. So what kind of livelihood that I have the chance to do? But I just feel very determined. Because the first year we want to go, that was in uh, before my mama. And a few friends were already booked. But because of 911, they cancel. Second year, again, we go. US go and book Afghanistan. Again, we cancel. Yeah? But we ended up in Tibet. Yeah? Third year, again, I want to go. Food. KIV number 88. So I somehow, I just thought, I need to go. I just want to go and, you know, to all these holy sites. And uh, then I know that Dante Mahinda is going to conduct a retreat in Champaka Buddhist Lodge. I approached him to get permission because at the time I thought, okay, I'm not going to disturb your troop, it's a 50 year old people. I'm going to arrange my itinerary, I mean, according to them, but just get permission to follow. Like, you know, if they take bus, I can, you know, hire a car and actually my younger sister and another friend. So at that time, my name is Sylvia. My sister is Suki, my friend is Sylvie. So one day thought we are three sisters. We are actually two sisters, one friend. And what happened in that particular determination is this. Uh, since it's full, so I go and ask for this permission. So he looked at me because she, he also don't know me. And uh, I told him, I said, Pante, can I take your permission to follow your itinerary? We are not going to disturb you, but we will arrange everything on our own. Then he looked at me and said, he said, uh, not this time, he said, some other time. Then I was looking at him again, he said, okay, ask second time. And then I said, Dante, can you please give some permission to follow your identity? I don't want to disturb you, I just follow your identity. Again, he said, he said, you don't know India. You know? Then I looked at him, I've been traveling to China alone, I've been traveling, you know, alone, but what do you mean by I don't know India? But I didn't ask him. He said, Next time, then he walk to his uh, room. Really. So in Chinese, he say, uh, if you don't do asking three times, you're not complete. <laughs> <laughs> so, see where he told me? I'm going to knock and stop. He open up, look at me again. Again, is me. I said, Panty, please. He just look at me and say, mm. So I take it as, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what his answer is. I said, mm, like that. I think he also don't know what to do with me, yeah? But I thought, okay, I asked three times. This time, third time, he said, mm, I think it's okay. Yeah. So I quickly asked the agent, the tour agent, to help me to book. And then what happened is, next Sunday, he called me. He said, can you please get a return note from Bande saying that he agreed for you to follow. That time Bande will be uh, flew back to Australia. So what can I do? So I emailed him. I said, Dante, uh, this uh, brother will so ask for you to, you know, write a note. Uh, that day you told me, uh, okay. So, you know, please just indicate that it's okay. First day, no news. Again, I emailed him. Second day, no news. I emailed him again that day. Third day, no news. Again, fourth day, very anxiously, I want to find the answer. Hopefully that he will reply. Somehow, for them, still no news. And what happened? I wrote back to Bante and said, Bante, by hook or by crook, I'm going in India. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I wrote that. By hook or by crook, I'm going in India. <laughs> and then, what happened is that uh, apparently they reply my email, but somehow don't get into my email box. Don't know what happened. Yeah? So I started to work to plan on my own. So I called Anna Lanka. And Anna Lanka said, uh, I'm sorry, you only have one flight and it's already full. So how to go? So then I thought, don't you have any other flight besides that flight that goes to, you know, uh, Bukaya? I said, we are planning to apply to India uh, to get another, uh, what do you call, entry. So I said, okay, put my name there. Yeah, put my name there and the key at me. Then, after we took it some time, I said, if this group, Emirates, go anywhere, you put my name there on. Three percent. All the names there. Do you know finally, we managed to get a seat? 
and then she get a seat. Then I was about to actually call for accommodation. And uh, interestingly, three person dropped from the group. Oh. Different, different person, but three, exactly three, dropped from the group. Then I was quite new to the trip really, I think around maybe about one, one month's time. Okay. Three person dropped. And the first thing that comes to the next morning is, Three of us. Because he thought we are three sisters. And um, KLE 88 jumped to front line. Yeah. Yeah. So but they offered to us. So immediately we grabbed the opportunity. So we so we managed to go. So very happy uh, going to visit the holy site of the Buddha. And I still remember the first time when the rich chair we see the Mahabodhi. So much joy. And I would have said, you know, those who don't have faith when you go to the Holy Son, you will have faith. Those who already have faith, you will have more faith. For me, it's uh, watching, you know, the Mahabali, uh, it's so much joy, you know, to look at it. And what happened is that, at the time, this thing down in me, although I'm a Buddhist, I always knew that, you know, the Buddha was born in the rich world. But I still have that kind of very subtle mind in my mind that, you know, thinking that the Buddha is still the, you know, the highest, highest thought, the biggest, yeah? Without knowing, it's very subtle, but it's only when I stand there, looking at, yeah, Mahabodhi Temple, I start to realize, hey, the Buddha is very down on earth, yeah? It's not somewhere up there or somewhere anywhere, yeah? He wants a human here before, and he practice and he get another one, and this is the place. Yeah? So, no more the kind of idea that Buddha is somewhere or, you know, uh, the kind of uh, high heaven, a uh, bigger god or, you know, that kind of things. That realization just told me. Yeah? And then, from there, then, the, at the time, uh, Bhante uh, actually asked us, anybody wants to shift? <laughs> at the time, Bhante did invite people to, to encourage people to, you know, take up that kind of uh, uh, challenge the shift I had, even as a lay person. Yeah? So then I thought to myself, um, last time, you know, I used to take my hand and look, you know. But when Bundy asked that question, the first thing I come, I mean, you know, the, the, the question that comes to my mind is that, because it was very near to Chinese India, <laughs> and I was a branch manager in a retail industry, I go for corporate function, many corporate functions, big executive CEOs. And I thought, should I? Because, you know, it's going to be New Year, I'm going to meet a lot of people. Then my friend, Sylvie, then she, she, because she knows me, we are quite close to see me. Then she then, I know you are going to share. She just mentioned like that, I know you are going to share, but... After that, I talked to myself, okay, second time. Yeah, maybe, yes. If I'm going to share, it's about me, not about how people look at me. It's how I look at myself. If I can accept it, I think I'll be there anymore. So I decided to shave. So when I shave at a time, I say, remember, and I say, not so easy, no? Those who are married, please ask your husband and wife. Those, you know, who are not married, please ask your parent. Yeah? Because one day, normally try to do it in a very proper way, so people don't have misunderstanding. So I got a call back, call my mother. Could I get her? Someone from the answer. So I said, Dad, we are not in India safely. And uh, the country said, you know, if you want to shave, we can shave, but I have to ask your permission. So he said, OK, for you. He said, up to you. So OK, thank you very much. <laughs> so actually, my youngest is also on the shave. So I told my husband, no, one at a time. <laughs> I said, we don't have to go back after my mother got shot, then we left. So one at a time, I said. So my sister said, okay, okay, you shave first. Yeah. So I remember when, when the, we had the ceremony, I was, I think the eldest probably among the group wants to shave, uh, among the females. So they shaved my head for one, I think one and a half hours. So, what do you call, so careful and, you know. But it was so much joy, you are sitting down there, and then they shave, nicely shave, you know. But during the shaving, you know, a lot of flashes come to me that I've been shaving before. I've been ordained before. Yeah? A lot of joy. So after that, 
you know, first time sharing, you don't really know uh, what, about what happened in your head already. So when you go on the street, people look at us, we look at them, why do they look at us? <laughs> then, oh, okay, I'm not bad. Yeah? Yeah, because, you know, first time, but it's so light, so light, so, so happy. Yeah? So then after that, we proceed to uh, what they call the vulture speed. And when I reach vulture speed, I feel like I'm coming home. It's so much peace, because I hardly buy flowers. When I reach there, people offer to buy flowers. I just take it and then I went and offer, and sit there and meditate. So it's like coming home. I don't know why, but I have that feeling. But in that Flemish tour, then after that we went to Sama. And then we reached uh, Kusinara. Kusinara is the place where we have passed away. And in Kusinara, interestingly, something happened to me. So we were all paying respect and uh, do chanting. Every time we, we chant the pain of joy, you know, Anika Jati Sansara, Sabari San, Anika Sansara, many a life I come again and again, not knowing huh? <coughs> the builder of the house. So when I chant that, I mean, I've been chanting before, but when I chant that, my tears just burst out. Huh? Just burst out. And then you know what comes into my mind? This thing comes into my mind. Why are you coming here again and again? <laughs> so I feel so bad, you know. I must have been making vows after vows of, you know, that I want to be liberated. But I come again and again. And not too bad actually. I was reminded again. Yeah, that my purpose of this life. Yeah? So from there I made a resolution. Okay, this life, again, come back. Yeah? But I can tell you, during my late life, I would say I'm a very blessed person. Although I don't come from a very rich family, but I'm always provided. All the basic necessity, I have a good uh, mother who is very loving, a father who is dedicated for the family. And uh, during my even uh, youth time, um, like I said, I'm a very boyish person. So in this life, that's why I say in my many lives, I was made. Yes. It's true. I can be even more boys than a boy. Yeah, I jump over gates. Yeah, when I walk cross road uh, and the other things. And if I uh, I play hockey, yeah, and uh, I see with you know sometimes when I look back at all those photos, um, when we have like inter uh, college or you know that kind of uh, games, uh, sometimes the guys invite me to take photo, and you don't know that I'm I'm the girl. It's all guys. Okay. So, <clears throat> but fortunately in a way that everything is like, when time comes, the door open. Time comes, the door open. Yeah? So, my name is Sumangala. Sumangala means auspicious blessing. So, I always feel that I receive a lot of uh, the Buddha's blessing. Yeah? And from that onwards, then, when we came back from the British, I told one thing, I said, I wish to renounce from day. So from day look amazing. Wait, wait, wait. Because at the time, you know, the, 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 the way I wear, you may think that this one not ready. I wear very tight jeans, huh? uh, very thick jeans and uh, very, what they call, because they go to corporate function. Yeah? Uh, of course, uh, uh, you name it, you say food, we eat thousands of all this kind of food because suppliers, uh, we are retailer, Normally they will invite you, they will spend you anything. You want to drink? No problem, any kind of wines. But I don't drink. Normally I will take oranges. And people will ask me, why you don't, you don't drink? I will say, the doctor said, stomach not good. <laughs> I don't mind, Dr. Buddha said. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't drink. Yeah? But at home, yes. At home with my family, like a, a bit of wine sometimes, I do drink. But outside, I don't drink. Yeah? Because corporate function, if you drink, you're going to get drunk. Yeah? And it's dangerous. I have experience with you know, my, even my colleagues. Because I say, we are the retailer. Supplier actually supplies a lot of things. And they want to entertain you so you can buy the product from them. And uh, when I don't drink, then some of the people, some of their own representatives, 
to know if you want to do because you need to book and if you are not uh, what you call uh, firm enough uh, then you have to get into that kind of uh, things but when I don't drink, some will join me because they say, luckily you don't drink then I can make the choice not to drink to accompany you yeah? and you know how suffering it is you know, when you have to work, you have to entertain and a lot of us are involved in that kind of things but we have a choice, if we have a choice and the reason why I think uh, it's important for us to make a choice is when even people spam you, you also have a choice. You don't have to, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, torture your life to get a gift. Yeah? I have a colleague, I still remember, he will always tell me, you know, uh, this area is not so, uh, what do you call, uh, safe, uh, lock the door, this and that. One day, he went for a corporate function, he came back, he went to sleep. I was actually uh, downstairs. Uh, my room is downstairs. We have a company house. So midnight when I went to the toilet, I look at the front door, it's open. I look at the gate, it's open. I look at the outer gate, it's also open. Middle of the night, three, four o'clock. That's how it can be when you get drunk. The next day, of course, I screwed him like nothing. <laughs> I said, you dare to tell me about safety. What happened to you? Yeah. Since then, he feel very shy. Yeah. So, for many people, like I say, when we walk the Damas way, we still have a choice to make a lot of good choice. Yeah. You don't have to follow. Yeah. But until then, when came back, Mr. said, uh, looking at me, he said, wait, go back to work first. So I took this advice and I left. One year after the pilgrimage. So there's this kind of like, um, uh, what do you call? Uh, like leaving the world. It's quite natural for me actually. Because when people ask me, why do you renounce? I said natural. Natural in the sense that when you practice, uh, I've seen both sides, you know, the enjoyment of life. But I also see the danger of pleasure. Yeah? But I also see this path, you know, where the Buddha teach, and it's so beautiful. Yeah? And, um, and from then actually, the, the, this progression is quite smooth in the way that I don't like, you know, like taking something like very drastic step. I sort of like plan it gradually. I also start to try to find a teacher, uh, look at where I can go to. And I'm interested in meditation. Of course, I look for Forest Monastery. And naturally, I look at all other tradition. And at the time, I also still follow Pijia to um, Perth. Yeah. And uh, I immediately actually ended up in the Tamasana in Perth. Because that time, the first time I went to Suwayi, I thought maybe I might actually go there. Yeah. We went for Atulam's Katina in Perth. I think that was around the year 2000 at that time. Yeah? And then we went to the library. At that time I was also in contact with Anjan Wanima. And uh, when I was working, I used also to, to contribute some money for them to pick some tea. So I thought maybe, you know, I, I was planning. Yeah? I chatted. Not that I chatted, I, I chatted, you know, where I should go and how I should go about it, finding a teacher. But of course I also found out that it is not a matter of finding a teacher. At the end, I realize your master is, you have to master him. The teacher is the guy here, but you've got to master your own mind. Yeah? The Buddha also mentioned, you yeah, know, a teacher, a guide, a show of the path, a kayana mitra, but you've got to master your own mind. Yeah? So from there, I find that, you know, you don't have to look very far to find a teacher. Yeah, of course, you have to also get uh, a good teacher that can guide you. Yeah? And uh, the rest of thing is of course a place to stay. And when I'm ready, after my pilgrimage, after one year of my pilgrimage, then I, I actually go to Ajahn Rama. But already at that time, I think they have uh, some, what do you call, uh, limitation. They take more Australian. And I think there are two persons, I think uh, man, this uh, Ajahn Hasakan. And uh, two of them are there, so I think they don't have much space at the time. But I was ready to go away. So then I actually approached the Mahinda. 
So his advice for me is to go to uh, Sri Lanka. And um, I went to this place called uh, Devana Pettis uh, Samatha Vipassana Meditation Center. Uh, it's a uh, Dasasya Mata uh, Center. So I, uh, it's a uh, Mata Kavisi Mantra for the nuns to practice. So, so when the time comes, and uh, I actually plan. So I thought, okay, I should get probably a teacher from Malaysia to guide me. And uh, then if the place, then there's a place to stay, then it's much easier for me. Yeah? Because I also, in the process, I also know that some nuns, Malaysian nuns, go to see, get all day, came back, no teacher, and they went to a different, uh, what you call, uh, temple. So sometimes you're allowed to stay one month, three months. So it's not going to go anywhere. And some of them, after that, they also destroy. So learning from there, I thought I should be also make that preparation. Uh, so finally, then when I decided, then uh, I still remember my my GM, my general manager. He was very uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's like a sudden for for him. But all the while he knew that I had the intention. Yeah. When I shared, like I said, when I came back, uh, the first thing that I learned is about perception. When I shared, I came back as a lay person. Uh, when I go to the office in the first day, I don't need to wear any leak. I still wear my office suit, natural, with bald head and walking. Uh, and I give a lot of people uh, that shock, yeah? because I never tell them that I'm going to shave. And the uh, first thing I remember is my neighbor. My neighbor saw me, and he kept quiet, but very strange. Then a, 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 a sound smell like that, curious, but she didn't ask anything. Later in the year, when I invited her to my house, then she said, you don't mind, I ask you something? I said, yes, what is it? You know, this one, not related to cancer, huh? I said, no, 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 no. I said, I'm all right, perfect, all right, okay? I went to India, came back, okay, that is one, how people perceive, okay? But you have both it, cancer, okay? And when I went to the office, you know, business people, when they see you, especially female, bald headed, you must have something somewhere going on. Yeah. Either heartbroken or, you know, something must be going on with you, right? Or else, you know, of all the pleasure, why you want to give up your, you know, crown, right? So, some of them may think I'm a bit cuckoo, lah. Yeah? But I don't have to explain because my assistant manager and all those things, they know how to explain for me. So it's all, oh, she got a wish, aspiration, you know, to, to offer it to the Buddha and this and that. So I don't have to explain to them. So when I go for corporate function, especially boss's wife, the first thing they see, you see how people perceive? I say, it's on. Since when you're so bold, new fashion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then after that, of course, some Buddhist friends will approach me and say, I actually felt very touched with the courage, you know. And uh, well, that is how our Buddhist friends support you. Right? And uh, then when I was in the, what do you call the, the retail center, one day this uh, elderly man came to me. He said, Sister, can I ask you something? I said, Yes. Is your this? Related to Buddhism. I said, yes. Then you know what he said to me? I have a coin at home, um, which is a five years coin. Would you like to come and view? Yeah. So, I tell people, just a hair cut. <laughs> but it can trigger so many perceptions. So that's how I learned about perception. So how you perceive your, yourself is very important. You have to have confidence with what is right, what is good. And I think the most joy that I would say from the path that I walk is I found the path. Yeah. The most joy. Because when you found that, you have no doubt in walking the path anymore. Yeah. The refuge is there really, for you. And uh, as I say, even for my boss, when I uh, sent him the letter, I put there his uh, first letter, uh, resignation come retirement. I'm not resigning just to jump to another company. Yeah? It's retirement. 
I told them, I had an action over there and thank them everything. I say, uh, I am now going to move to my second phase of my life, yeah, which is for renunciation. And the boss called me to talk to me about two and a half hours. So he's a family man, very good man, very nice man. He asked me, don't you think that people are going for something wrong with them? <laughs> yeah, look at him and say, maybe you are also right. I don't say totally wrong. I said, some people, yes, when they get into the trouble, they think monastic life is a way out. Yeah? But of course, when they enter, they know it's not. Yeah? And I say, don't you think that they are anti-social? I say, maybe some also, are, not everyone. And after that, you also ask me, don't you think they are abnormal? <laughs> Then I look at him and say, you are also right. <laughs> I say, but do you know there's two kinds of abnormality in it? I say, no, the normal curve, economic curve, normal curve. I say, they are abnormality left side and they are abnormality right side. Most people fall in majority, but their lifestyle, I say, they are called normal abnormal. <laughs> Because why? The last one is all upset now. Every other, you sleep at the same day, wake up at the same day, you eat at the wrong time, yeah, and they get very stressed out. Their life is all totally different. That is called normal, abnormal. But I said they are also abnormal, abnormal. And that one is they stress themselves too much that they cannot handle their mind anymore. But there's another group end of this side. On the right, that is called abnormal normal. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they are abnormal in the sense that people look at them; they are very minority group. But they choose their life because they see, they have seen that path, they have seen that life leads to a more wholesome, more fruitful, more meaningful, not only for themselves but for others. Yeah? So then we can quiet. They are normal, but normal. Yeah. So, then he got nothing to say to me. And at the end, he said, Okay, I wish you well. But he said, On the way to Sri Lanka, I said, I hope that you meet a Mr. Ra. He still couldn't give up. He still couldn't give up. I said, Mr. Chen, you see here. Then he said, okay, okay, I wish you well. Yeah. So that was how, you know, uh, I resigned from my place, I mean, the workplace, and at the same time, I got to tell my parents. So how should I tell my parents? So at the time, uh, with a friend here, actually, uh, we went to a katina in Johor. Huh? And that day, I wanted to tell my parents I wanted to go far. So how to make them uh, to have some peace of mind? So my mother said, you want to stay in the forest, you know, forest of Taifa. <laughs> and she's a big woman, okay? And then he said, that forest, where do people offer food? I said, don't worry. So I brought her to attend a Katina in Sati Monastery in Johor. Yeah? You know, Katina, a lot of people, isn't it? A lot of food, a lot of stalls. In Malaysia, uh, there are they're, they're plenty of foods. So I brought my parents there to, to, to show them this is uh, something like Forest Monastery. So they went there. And we looked around, so many people. Yeah? And so much food. No tiger, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, it happened. I mean, it's strange. I find that everything that comes in my life, I find it's always that. Like, and time comes to the open. Time comes to open. And you can't believe that the person that my parents met is uh, the parent of the abbot. The abbot's parent, the father, happened to meet my mother, and my mother started talking about, oh, my daughter also said want to go forth. And then he was relating his experience as a parent, you know, whose children, I mean his child, go forth. And he was relating to my mother and saying, when my son go forth, you know, my heart is like the nine piercy too. You know? my, heart, my mother was a reason. But because that time I think um, Anjan King was suffering from cancer actually. 
you know, and then some of the event falls. But after that, he was killed. Yeah, he followed for a small city, I think, Argentina's small tree. And then he explained everything, you see, when he went to retreat in the forest, he said, I went to visit him. I stayed with him, he said, my son, so pitiful. Six years, never eat even one fish. He was telling my mom. So <laughs> <laughs> then, then my mom said, Oh, I think maybe you know, uh, because my mom also heard that uh, the Ajahn King has suffered cancer, you know. So he said, Oh, maybe that is a medicine for him. <laughs> you know, it, you know, anything else, grass or you know, or, or leaves, you know, when they, they don't have food. Then he said, I say with them, we stay in those places, is it? And I did not come out, is it? Because sometimes, you know, the whole world is going wrong. So my mom said, Listen. And he said, I came back to Singapore, was it? And uh, those auntie told me that, you know, if I were to go for, you know, one year, I think no flesh coming back. <laughs> so thin, is it, you know? And after, at the end of the story, you know, mom, don't worry, is it? If the child is able to go forth, is it? Then, it brings a lot of marriage to the family, is it? My son, then, after he came back, he said, now he's a good practitioner. People offer land for me to start a center and to teach. And now I also come and support him, you see. And I say, well, one time, I say, my hand couldn't move. Then my son asked me to come to the center to stay. And I say, one night after 10 days, suddenly in the midnight, he said, my hand started, you know, don't know what happened, start to move on its own. And then the next day, my hand was okay. He said, I love lessons. So, good enough. I don't have to say much. Then, that evening, then I told my parents, I said, I'm ready to go. Uh, last time I used to tell my mother, uh, well, I actually parked myself at the age of 45 to go for. At the time, I was 38. So when I tell this to my mom, my mom said, I thought you said 45. <laughs> so I told her, Mom, now I'm 38. By the time I'm 45, I think I'll be better than what I am now. That makes sense, doesn't it? I say, if I'm 45 and go for, then 50 something, maybe 18 years and there already, you know, the practice will not be as good, is it? Then that makes sense a bit for her. So after that, uh, I start to, to, to do my planning. And uh, then they give me the blessings. I know a lot of parents go to give blessings to the parent, or me to the child to go for. But I have that blessings. And I also have a lot of uh, blessings from my friends. Colleagues, even some friends are here, yeah, and uh, my colleagues. So when I go forth, uh, as I'm going first actually, and I still remember how they supported me, giving me farewell dinner, and you know, <laughs> like ushering me to really go, like very grand, you know, dinner after dinner, you know, to wish me to, to and then offer me even the bowl already, you know, when I was an America, they already offered me a bowl, my young see me. Yeah. And then some of them offer me white ropes, yeah, uh, and then this is a business from there, they organize, yeah, and uh, so I was very blessed, so I went there and I uh, practiced for about three months before I go to Australia to continue my best place. And uh, so in Sri Lanka, uh, how I get my name Sumangala is also interesting, because I'd like to share with you because it's something that we sometimes we never ponder upon. Uh, at the beginning, I always thought I want to choose this one as Buddha Mangala, not the Mangala Buddha. Buddha Mangala is blessings of the Buddha, the long A. So when the nun said, no, that I want to be ordained, they had ordination there. So they asked me, because they are going to ordain two nuns there, so they asked me whether I would like to join you. So uh, then I actually gave a talk, but at the time they are selecting names. So I told them to say, what name or what things you would like to talk. So I told them, maybe Buddha Mangala, I like this name, I said, because I always feel the blessings of the Buddha. Then they start discussing all the synonyms. After that, they come back to me and say, we, we thought this name not so suitable. I said, why? I said, Buddha Mangala, too big a name for you. <laughs> it's like Mangala Buddha, I said, to them it's like Mangala Buddha. I said, too big a name. I said, oh, actually, you know, got the Buddha Rakita, Buddha Dasa, you know, the Buddha Buddha, you know. But he said, too big a name for you. So then, you know, he said, okay, now I'm going to select another name for you. So they start discussing again. 
Then they come up with Mangala. Then again, the nun come and tell me. Then again, they think, think, think. This one, Mangala, too common a name in Sri Lanka. Uh, then after that, then again they discuss. This time they come and suggest me. So Mangala. So I oh, so Mangala. Okay, very nice. Eh? Auspicious blessing. One is Buddha Mangala. Huh? Uh, blessing of the Buddha. That one is blessing. Now it is auspicious blessing. So I said, okay, I take that one. So I find that blessing always. And uh, in this path, in this journey, I say, the most thing that I find the joy is to find the path. And this is the path. This is a path that I find that brings a lot of joy, brings a lot of happiness, uh, a lot of things that comes into our life that we start to reflect the blessings the Mangala Sutta. Yeah? The Mangala Sutta, especially when we talk about you know, all the not associating with the food in my life, I think a lot of, you know, I don't really mix around with the food, but uh, uh, the wise one, and uh, to honor those respect, uh, respectful, uh, and then to recite in a very suitable place, and to have merits from the past. I find I have a lot of merits in that sense. Yeah? To be able to comprehend uh, uh, teaching, or to, you know, to learn. I have a very quick mind, but I used to go slow. Yeah? And uh, then, you know, all these blessings start to appear. Yeah? And uh, the challenge is, of course, looking inside. No more that things outside there. Any things that come in is a challenge looking with it. Do you have the ego? Do you still have a lot of defilements? Greed? Hatred? Yeah. So that was the challenge to overcome, to purify the mind further. It's not external thing. I can be alone and I can be in a group. Yeah. And then actually, I actually went forth, I said. Uh, what I also realized is uh, the first lesson that I, I learned from the meditation at the time when I went forth, I have never known that uh, suffering uh, that much because I, I know I'm suffering, but I don't really get attached with people. Yeah? Until the first time I went there for the retreat, choir retreat, Suddenly, this thing come. My younger sister suddenly has missed me. He said, because in the airport, everybody cries when I leave to Sri Lanka. And I was looking at them, why they are they crying? I mean, going for fingers, come back, you know, what is that cry? Yeah? And I still couldn't really understand. Yeah? So uh, when I went there, my sister has a miss. He said, when I was young, mom went to work. When I was teenage, Sister, other sister got married. Now you leave. Ah, that was so touching. My tears start to run down. I start to feel the Buddha's teaching on the path, separation from the loved ones. I have never experienced it because I thought, what is that to you? Know? But that really struck my heart. My tears just keep rolling and rolling and rolling, and then my meditation asks me what happened. I said. Suddenly I realized, I see, the suffering of separation. I have never knew it in my life. Yeah? Because I was always very strong person, uh, happy cry. But of course, very soft person sometimes inside. You can hit me, I won't cry. But if you hit my heart, I will cry. <laughs> yeah? So at the time, you know, that realization just hit me. And then I told my manager, she said, I'm going to cry today only. I said, tomorrow I'm not going to cry anymore. So really, that day I cried and cried and cried at anything point. And then the next thing is stop. That's it, enough. What suffering is for separation. So along the way, I said, a lot of Dhamma will unfold. And if you sincerely practice it, and uh, there are many other things yeah, that comes after that. For example, when after the Sri Lanka, I went to I was Australia to stay with my teacher for about three months. And there again, I also learned something. Yeah? I still remember when Bhante Marita actually, when we reached there a few days, then suddenly one day Bhante said, uh, the, what do you call the mobile toilet, someone go and shit there. Don't know who. So, do you mind to have to clean up? 
So I said, okay, first lesson you must show is to clean up shit, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so is it okay, no problem. Because when I was a branch manager, from, from the top of the roof, I can climb until the bottom of the toilet, I can go. <laughs> yeah? So it's not a problem to me and, and him and really. Although I'm a branch manager, I can do anything because I was a I mean manager before. So, so I said, okay, we will go and clean. So when we clean, then there's some other things that is nearby. And but then suddenly I did pull out an old toaster. So I said, I can please wash it. So here's wash it, okay? So I took that. After cleaning the toilet, finish the mobile toilet, then I took that one, then I start to clean, and I start to wet the clothes and wash it, because the instruction is washing. But in my heart, I said, electrical items should not wash. But he said, wash it. Then I asked another person who stayed here for, for, for some time, I asked her in a quiet moment, I said, wash it. Then he said, he said, if all of you, <laughs> so I wash it. So I don't wash it halfway, but I take it off. I don't wash it. Like the other should not be washed. Then I look at him. I look at the other girl. He wants to wash it while I'm washing it. I said, sorry, sorry. I said, I'll dry it. But that lesson teach me one thing. I tell myself, whatever it is, next time, please use your common sense. <laughs> yeah. So, it is a good teaching. Although it's a simple thing, but it's a good teaching to me. Please use the common sense. Yeah? Um, from then, of course, uh, a lot of time I use my common sense to do things. Yeah? And uh, to walk the path as a renouncer from Malaysia, you may think, uh, no challenge. Eh? But I think one thing in Malaysia, we are very fortunate. We have different platforms. Our challenge is a bit different because we have all the three Yanas here, and my teacher is also helping out to, although he's from Tara Federation, he also learned from Mahayana, Tantra Yana. And uh, so as a student, we got to catch up. Yeah? And in Malaysia, I think we meet different, different uh, platforms. Yeah? Some devotees will come uh, practicing Theravada way, some from Mahayana, Omnitapho, or from me. Some may come from a different platform to that end. So it's important for us also to learn out, yeah, uh, different traditions, so we'll be able to help others. But at the same time, when I first came back from Australia, uh, Dalai Mahina had a center in Alakarama, Tampi. It's a very nice center, uh, 20 acre. So I actually took the permission to stay there. Uh, at the beginning, of course, uh, it's quite a remote place. Yeah, um, about uh, uh, 1 km from the main road, and it's a park place. So at the beginning, the community feel a bit uh, uncomfortable because even yeah, only at the time there's another uh, what we call lay devotees uh, who spend time staying in the retreat center. So two of us, but they were a bit concerned at the time because it's quite remote. So we have to travel up and down. Whenever they go down, a few person go down, then we can stay. So at that time, then I have to travel up and down. Until such a time when they get uh, two uh, workers to work there for the object. Then only they allow us to stay. But going through those uh, time uh, in Malaysia, I mean, in my own experience, I say the joy that I have is to find that this is the path. I'm confident this is the path, and I have no regret that I wish is there, and uh, I'm blessed. The other challenge will be how we in Malaysia take ordination. We may think that Malaysian women have, don't have much problem for their renunciation. Well, they do, they do have some challenges. And especially I see, I remember, is at the beginning when I go to Australian Islamic Pante told me, where am I first? Where am I first? Is it? To gauge how people respond, how our own local people, extra lay people respond to you. And so it's uh, at least in between that time, you will know how you should adjust yourself. For example, when I came back, where am I? Shave. Sometimes when you go to any place, people don't provide you any seat. Where would you sit? Yeah? We cannot be asking. 
So sometimes we got to just have to adjust ourselves. You know? So if over you see, then you see. If you don't over you see, you got to be using your common sense to do what you need to do during that time. So again, whether the main devotees are uh, what they call uh, it's not like Sri Lanka or you know, probably in other places where they know. In Sri Lanka, when we climb up the bus, they will offer you the seat slip, front seat. In Malaysia, sometimes you look at them, you know, everybody's seated, but you got no seat. Yeah? So, again, it's also sometimes uh, the culture that uh, we, we may have some idea, but sometimes we, we don't know how to go about it. So, that transition, we also learn how to adjust our sound, and uh, of course, uh, along the way, and I, s I always uh, also see that some even lay people, because they are from Malaysia, you know, they have different, different background, different, different practice. Some will tell you, no need to, you know, always sit and meditate one. Mindfulness all the time. They be propitious. Mindfulness all the time. No need to, you know, sit and meditate. You know? So they are probably some from Zen or some from different. So some of them don't think they know better. So they will tell you what to do somehow. Yeah? Some will say, why you don't drive? You know, they find it like so difficult to offer transport. Yeah? So what, what can we answer? So sometimes you say you want to support. Yeah? But when the time comes, where is the support? And we cannot be arguing with them, you know. We just have to find our way. Yeah. So at the beginning, yes, there are times that we face that kind of things. Yeah. But here is only for your I mean, sharing, so you all know what are the challenges that actually relation maybe nonsense or even other place actually face. Yeah. So uh, these are some of the things, yeah. And some, of course, now I'm the tenth preceptor. I still, if nobody offer me, huh, but they still offer some more thing, I still can cook, right? But if I take Upasampada, and people always say, Susan, why don't you take Upasampada? I say, the, what they call the uh, structure may not be there yet. If I take Upasampada, who's going to be my kapiya? I say, who's going to really, you know, day in day out offer food? Huh? So I can really have the ease of mind to practice, and I can have ease of mind to share and to help. Huh? But these are the things that we need to do. Yeah, the lay people also have to know. It's not just we if we take, yes, of course we can always take it. But like, you know, we put in what each other said. If we really have to have that structure also. Yeah. Or else, yeah, you can go hungry, then you go hungry. Yeah. And if you start to cook, then you say, hey, you know you take Upa Samana away, you do this. Then again the question. So the understanding must be there for I find Malaysian Bikuni to come. And I always believe it will come one day. And we're very fortunate. Even today you can see there are so many Bikuni here to support us. And they have gone through a lot of hardship. And they make the time to come here to show us that it's possible to be done in Malaysia. And for you all to come here and also to listen. We have a lot of blessing in Malaysia. The platform is different. And I always wish this. One way, we can have the ordination in Malaysia. We can invite all the senior Bikunis to come, and we can invite our, what we call, especially uh, Pratishra Nankara, who is very kind to step forward. It's very courageous of him to do that. Not many women can do that. Yeah. So we hope that we will be able to convince more that we can have ordination in Malaysia and we can help more what we call a lay or Buddhist in Malaysia who have the wish to go forth and uh, as Kotomi Vihara as a starting point and uh, I know that the barbarians uh, wish will come through very soon. Yeah. And uh, it's Mahasadu to her effort and uh, I hope that all who are here will really sincerely support them all the way. Not support the big 
dipuli tak ada sepok the Buddha sesama the Buddha dhamma yeah. so always remember that when you suffer it's not about but a female only even some sangha some bhikkhu also face that kind of problem not only bhikkhu yeah. so as a what you call a, as a dhamma grow in your heart then we'll be able to come together huh, as a sangha and from there I think we can do a lot of good things to help people to even help ourselves for liberation and this path is, is there it's just for us to realize and uh, it definitely brings you a lot of joy and happiness and of course in this life we hope that more and more people will be able to liberate themselves and uh, to be able also uh, be of service for the many coming. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah.